beginner belly dance. Let's do it, ladies. Okay. You can do this. I don't care what your age, your size, your ethnicity, your income bracket. You can do this. This is a dance for women by women. And traditionally, it was actually done in private. Uh, it was not performed publicly or um, commercialized. Now, I'm wearing shorts because I want you to see what my legs are doing. Normally, I would ha have on a long skirt down to the floor, barefoot, very grounded, earthy, sensual dance. Now, you will see some performers who have on high heels, the lows, or a sheer scarf pretending to be a skirt. I call that Las Vegas belly dance, and that's fine. That's fine. If you want to dress like that and dance like that, you go, girl. Make it your own. But I do prefer a more earthy and traditional approach because it just suits me. But do what feels right for you. Okay, so I have shorts on because I want you to see what my legs are doing. And I've had teachers who would have to lift her skirt up so we could see because there's some action that happens that's hidden beneath the skirt that the viewers don't see as the woman's performing. Okay, first let's show the belly. Now, hip coin belt can exaggerate movements because the coins or let's say something with tassels, you know, you get a lot of extra, you know when it comes to a shimmy. Let's start with a basic stance. First off, we have our normal standing position, but in belly dance, we do tuck our hips in a bit, okay? Because that allows us to do movements we couldn't do otherwise. If it's already out there, we're going to go with that. Another thing is, bend your legs. Get some flex in it, okay? And notice when I'm bending my knees, Look at some action I have happening, just marching in place without even lifting my feet or my heels. If your legs are already straight, what you going to do with that? Can't do much else. Just try it. Put your legs straight now and see, you know. So now, bend your legs, tuck your tail a bit, okay? Chest out, shoulders back, and just move your legs walking in place. Okay? Marching in place. Now if we had on coin belts or scarves, this would even look exaggerated. Now if I go fast, you get more of a shimmy. Now vibrate your legs like you're freezing. You're doing a shimmy. Now you can drive the shimmy from the bottoms of your feet or your knees or your bum. If you play around with this, you'll You'll come and see what I'm talking about. Some of this is hard to really explain, but you'll feel it. I've had teachers who get really technical too with, like it's a Gray's Anatomy class and they know all the anatomical muscle names and, oh, squeeze your right oblique as you contract your left glute and then release the oblique as it's just like, no, no, that's just, that's information overload, and I'm thinking, squeeze my muscle, contract, it's just, okay. I take a more intuitive approach. Also, some teachers count five, six, seven, eight, where some find a natural rhythm in the music, and you'll hear it, and that just seems to work better for me, but you'll find uh, what works for you. So, with the shimmy, knees, okay? Also, if you are heavier, you kind of get the extra reverb with your weight. <laughs> so skinny girls can shimmy, but they have to work harder for it. And also, belly dance has been called the um, uh, dance of the goddess and a fertility dance. And you will gain incredible core strength. Uh, women push babies out like that. They have very strong chiral muscles. Uh, this is just excellent 
important for all around health and it actually aids in digestion because of the um, movement and activity. So it's very helpful for you. Um, let's focus on hips today. Now, one thing about belly dance that makes it look more dramatic is isolation. For example, I'm just going to do some figure eights with my hips. Notice how I'm not moving my upper body, or at least I'm trying not to. I used to have and still have a tendency to kind of rise and bounce, but it doesn't look as dramatic as when we can isolate. Same thing with chest circles. You know, it's like I'm all over the place like this, it just doesn't look the same. You know, you can't really so isolating. Okay. Let's talk about figure eight. The easiest way that it's been explained to me, and I'm visual, we call them figure eights because it's like if you take pencils to our hips, this is a common analogy, but it's very effective, and you were trying to draw figure eights on the wall. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is easier for me to convey, like, or understand, like, oh, okay, I'm drawing the figure eight, rather than, oh, I'm contracting this muscle up and, uh, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so, let's focus on figure eights and all the different looks we can do with just circles. A figure eight is two circles, basically, connected. So, we're going to do a bunch of circles, okay? So just pretend you have those pencils taped to your hips and you're going to draw a figure eight on the wall, okay? Now another thing, let's take those pencils pointing down. We're going to draw them on the ground now. And what that would look like also notice I am keeping my upper body still, or relatively still, okay? I'll show you from the side. And now the back. Figure eight on the floor. Okay, also, let's just do little circles. Take one hip, you can either mirror me or do your opposite, whatever you're comfortable with. And now, with the pencil tips to our butt, <laughs> we're going to draw a little circle on the wall. A little circle. I am raising my heel to get more emphasis. But do also practice with it down. You should be able to do it with your heel down as well. And then try it the other way. Because see how different it looks? Now we were just doing the figure eights. And I'm going this way. But look at what happens if you go the other way. Okay? For now, don't worry about the arms. Um, we don't want information overload, but you can kind of just be relaxed about it, like I'm doing. But, you know, uh, think of your hands, your dance hands, don't like all, oh, you know, kind of, you know, have dance your pretty hands. So, and the move is really focused more on what we're isolating. Okay, so we're doing little circles, doing little circles. Drawing a circle on the wall. And then to add interest to something as simple as a circle, you could take it in a circle. Okay? Now, we're going to reverse our circle. And you can see how it does look different. Okay? Play around the circles. Do a circle around yourself, as if your spine. 
Now, remember, tuck your tail. Because if it's way out here already, tuck your tail. I'm doing a circle around my feet. And again, you can take that the other way. Play with circles. Now, to take a simple move but make things more interesting, you can change your elevation. So let's say I'm doing a circle. Same thing with figure eight. Simple can look very elegant. You don't have to give them everything and do every trick in the book, but what you give them, really give it to them. Focus on that isolation. And if you would like to call attention to an area, because some of the movements can be tiny, you can frame your body. And people want to look at what your hand's framing. Also, if you yourself look. You know? Where the eye goes, people follow. You know? Gives more drama, too. You can engage with the people, but still, you don't have to maintain eye contact or be flirty or anything like that. I don't bother with that. The flirty part. Um, <clears throat> the circles experiment with the different ways you can do them, but also play around with chest circles. Okay? Like, again, circle on the wall, circle on the wall, chest slides. You can also do hip slides. Okay. These are very simple movements that can look very, very beautiful. I'd like to have music, but there's copyright things, and it seems like when I talk with music on, they always kill my video. So we're not having music today because of that. So when I do dance with the music, you'll notice I'm never talking. That's why. Um. Plus I'm dancing. Okay, so what else for today? Because uh, these are just basic, basic things, but they are kind of like, you know, some of the, uh, the meat of it all. So, figure eights on the wall, figure eights on the floor. This is what I want you to drill. Go the other way with it play around. It also looks interesting when you decide to go the other way, you know? Um, I guess something I haven't really tried is like doing everything in a circle. That's kind of weird, but hey, you know, play around. Don't be afraid. This is how new moves are discovered. And you could be that person that comes up with the coolest thing ever and everyone will be copying you. And if someone ever copies you, that is the sincerest form of flattery. Because they're trying to be like you. Okay. Um, I just kind of spontaneously said this. I don't really have any kind of like... I didn't have a plan, I'm not a teacher, I'm not an instructor, I'm just sharing with you the basics I've learned, okay? And I myself haven't even learned everything. Um, the isolation is important, otherwise things kind of start looking sloppy. So for now, focus on keeping things still and just getting control of the movement. Another thing with the figure eights or the circles, like, don't be afraid to try to walk with things and move it around. We can grab 
branch outside of circles now. You're getting the idea there. That may feel awkward, but keep trying. You will get it. I'm confident you can do it. If I, did. I had very bad coordination and I still struggle with some things. So it's okay. It's okay. Um, hip drops. Very, very common. Again, it's good you can see behind me. I'm not sure how well what the distance on um, what the feet are really doing. But a common hip drop is this. Okay, and this can be an easy way. You're just going with the time of the music. Doom, 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 You know? Um, again, that's something you can make interesting too by elevating and changing your height. Um, do both sides because you will find you it's easier on one side than the other and a lot of us it's, it's awkward on our least dominant side like I'm ambidextrous but I'm predominantly right handed so it is awkward on my left. Um, but Try it out. The elevation too. By the way, your legs are going to get very strong with the uh, up and down thing. Now, something that can be very tricky, but do challenge yourself. And you're going to have beautiful legs. See how far down you can go? Let's just do piston hips, okay? Notice the uh, tail's stuck, knees are bent, and I'm kind of like marching in place. And I'm going to get piston hips. But you can do this kind of controlled through this area rather than driving it from your knees. But play around with it. You will see and feel the difference. But get comfortable with both. But try piston hips. Go down. As low as you can comfortably go. And then come up. Now, burning, burning, yeah. Um, what you find is you will reach a certain point where maybe you cannot get back up or it's awkward or jerky, okay, and you'll find that point and um, with time you will find you will improve and you'll be able to go lower and come up easier, but you will need to strengthen your legs. So I used to be able to go all the way down and back up, but really I'm rusty, so let's see what I can pull off here. choppy coming up. But yeah, someone told me something interesting that they're measuring a gauge of health by if you can sit on the ground Indian style and get up without using your hands pushing you up. So let's try. See, okay, I'm like this. Okay, if you struggle with that, you need better leg strength. And, uh, yeah, they're using this as a gauge. So, just this simple practice is an exercise for your legs. But, play around. You can, like, go down and see how gracefully you can come up. Because what happens is there's a point where we kind of get a little jerky and it does not look graceful. It's okay. It's okay. It happens to the best of them. Push through it. Now, if you want this, you can do it, but you're going to have to work for it. This isn't a dance. That just, oh yeah, sure. It takes a lot of incredible core strength. It's good for you, ladies. We'll get into other stuff later. We don't want to overdo it. You already have enough information now. You can do some simple drills to build up your confidence. And you can do this. Put on any kind of music you like that makes you want to move. You do not have to limit yourself just to Middle Eastern music or, you know, make it your own. I do it to all kinds of music, even country. Yep. That's right. <laughs> so, have fun. Um, also, Feel free to put on something that really just kind of 
sometimes there is something in the flow of the fabric that just makes you feel more like dancing. You're <laughs> like, I'm a dancer now. It's, it's, it's nice. And have fun with it. It's like playing and dressing up. Um, but again, you don't need any fancy expensive outfit with sequins on it or whatever. But I do like the cotton, earthy, more tribal approach. And I do like a fusion. But I've practiced various styles and um, I appreciate them all. Like the classic Egyptian. The moves with classic Egyptian, first of all, they don't show their stomach. They have full length. Uh, dresses that are form-fitting, or they have fabric that looks like skin, but it's a fake out, like pantyhose, opaque stuff, for the kind of look, but not showing the belly. Like, it's, it's messed up. If that goes back to religion, that's, that's another video. Um, but the, the Egyptian moves is tighter than Turkish. They can have similar moves, but for example, an Egyptian they might be doing those little tight things, whereas Turkish is more dramatic, and they're doing stuff like that instead of little tight little, oh, you know, oh, I'm going around myself. No, Turkish is not going around, okay? So the moves are more exaggerated. Um, I do not like to confine myself and limit myself to movements. The body can do a lot of different things. So play with it, ladies. Make it your own, okay? Also, one nice thing about the skirts, the long skirts, when you're doing a shimmy, it hides in a jiggle, <laughs> okay? And um, it hides kind of what's going on with the knees, you know, it takes away some of the mystery. Because there's some cool moves where you can look like you're floating, and when you don't see what's going on with the legs, you know, it can look um, more dramatic to the people. Because you have that sweeping motion going on. Um, embrace the long skirt. Embrace the long skirt. Some women like the sparkly, shiny, satiny things, and that can be beautiful. But I do tend to like the more, um, oh, kind of Indian, uh, which is celebrating some of my roots with the natural cotton and the matte fabrics. They can get into some of the sequins and what have you as well on the coins, but they don't tend to have, um, the fabrics are silky and uh, as sparkly. It's a different kind of more earthy look. If you look it up with the Rajasthan Indians, you, you will see what I'm talking about versus what I was calling like Las Vegas belly dance. Okay, ladies, so do your drills. Uh, feel free to write in with questions. Let me know how it's going. If you're struggling with something, maybe we can push through it and figure it out together because sometimes it is very awkward, okay, and further detail is needed. Uh, but what really helped me is just being able to mirror my teacher and one thing, it would be weird if she's doing her right arm but we're supposed to do our right arm which looks the opposite to us. It was like easier if she was doing her right for me to do my left, like I'm looking in a mirror. Or it would help me if she had her back to me where I could see the movement. But when my mind has to flip it all around, it's kind of like, eh. Now, watch yourself in a mirror and you're going to learn a lot about where you need to, you know, tighten up on things. But the thing with that, you can become reliant on the mirror. This happened in a class when my teacher had us all turn around facing away from the mirror with our backs to it. Most of us, I forgot the choreography. So really I wasn't memorizing it or feeling it in my muscles and I was just mirroring what I was visually seeing. And she knew this and we were all busted. Yes. So the people in the back we're just following people in the front, but when it turned around, the people in the back were now in the lead. They didn't know what to do, <laughs> and my teacher chuckled. She's like, "Yep, I knew it." So do practice without the mirror, so you can like feel the move. It's going to be a different thing, okay? And also, with the visual, there is a distraction because of the visual. 
when you take that away, there does seem to be a bit more focus there. Um, okay, so that's it for now. Thank you for tuning in. And this was Beginner Belly Dance Hit Circles. Namaste.